सर आ गए क्या अभी वो उसने लेने गए इयरफोन्स वगैरह लेने गए सकलानी जी क्या हाल है आपका सेंटर बढ़िया चल रहा है आपकी बेस्ट विशेष लश्कर साहब को भी बधाई दे दीजिएगा एडिशनल डायरेक्टर बन गएगी भाई अभी लेटर तो नहीं आया इनका बट वो तो बिल्कुल हम उन्हें डे टू डे अपडेट लेते रहते हैं सर उनसे जी चिट्ठी की प्रतीक्षा का सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम डॉक्टर सी के घोष हाँ सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम यू फॉर दिस मोमेंट अर्लियर वी हैव शेड्यूल दिस मीटिंग ऑन द टेक्नोलॉजी डे बट ड्यू टू दी इलेक्शन लोकल बॉडी इलेक्शन वी हैव नाउ रीशेड्यूल्ड टू टूडे नाउ आई वेलकम डॉक्टर सी के मोस फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर रीजनल सर्विसेज डिविजन director ncid former director ssc ignorish he has a vast experience in as far as the open and distance learning system i welcome i also welcome dr uc pandey present director regional services division dr op sharma director ncid my colleagues dr shiran mukherji additional director डॉक्टर एम ए लस्कर डॉक्टर अंजना डियर कॉर्डिनेटर्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो डॉक्टर घोष इज एन एमिनेंट स्कॉलर हिज एक्सपीरियंस इन फिजिक्स बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम ही वर्क इन ओपन एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग सिस्टम बिफोर i welcome dr uh, ck ghosh for this meeting i request dr anjana to initiate the kuldeep yes. kuldeep dr anjana yes. Sarva 
Dr. Anjana, now I request Dr. Siran Mukherjee, a digital director, please introduce Dr. about Dr. C.K. Gosa, Ghosh. Dr. C.K. Ghosh is one of the eminent uh, educationists as far as the IGNU is concerned. He, he has a vast experience in IGNU, in open and distance learning. Earlier, uh, he was in a school of sciences. And then he joined as a regional director in uh, RC, uh, Kolkata. Now I request Dr. Uh, Siran Mukherjee, please inform about the research experience, research uh, and experience about the Dr. C.K. Ghosh. Thank you, sir. Um, respected Dr. C.K. Ghosh. Former Director, Regional Services Division, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Dr. Uh, UC Pandey, the present Director, Regional Services Division. Dr. O.P. Sharma, Director, NCIDE in IGNU Headquarters. Our Regional Director, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi. Uh, Dr. A.M. Saklani. My uh, colleagues, Dr. Lashkar, Dr. Anjana and all other colleagues of the regional center, NOIDA and other regional centers, our academic counselors, and also the students of I'm sorry, sir. Sorry for this uh, interruption in between. Uh, well, I would like to, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. C.K. Ghosh, although those of us who are in the system, uh, he need, he does not need any introduction, but uh, there are people who are from outside, so I would like to uh, tell them about our uh, esteemed guest today. Dr. C.K. Ghosh, he has been the former director of Regional Services Division and also the director of NCID in Idu. Before joining the Regional Services Division, he was at the School of Sciences in IGNU headquarters as a leader in physics and also as a lecturer in physics at the Scottish Church College, Kolkata. He was a doctoral scholar of CSIR from the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science and his work mainly concentrated on electrical, electrothermal and galvanomagnetic transport properties of thin solid fields. He is the co-author of five books, which are all mostly in the areas of physics, published by the leading publisher, McGraw Hill, Education India, and the PHI Learning. But here I would also like to highlight one of the very interesting books, that the fifth book of his, Did You Know, is basically a compilation of 500 interesting facts which have been published by the Viva Books. Dr. Ghosh is credited with publication of hundreds of research papers in the areas of physics, mainly solid state physics, mathematics, physics education, and open and distance learning. He has served in the Board of Management, Academic Council, and Research Council of our university during his tenure in the university for a number of terms. He has been the member of the Executive Council, Research Council, and Planning Board of Netaji Subhash Open University, Kolkata. He has been also the member of Academic Planning Board of Baba Sahib Ambedkar Open University at Ahmedabad, Gujarat. 
He had also been the vice president of the Kolkata chapter of the Indian Association of Physics Teachers and a member of Indian Physical Society. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. O.P. Sharma, the director of NCIG. Uh, well, Dr. Ghosh was also the nodal officer of Sakshat, the one-stop education portal of the Ministry of Human Resource Development, now Ministry of Education, and also the chairman of the content advisory group for physics for the Sakshat portal of the Ministry of Education. I once again have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. C.K. Ghosh on behalf of Regional Center Noida and also NCID IGNU headquarters. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, uh, thank you. you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Siran. Now I request Dr. O.P. Sharma uh, because he is very busy in uh, another meeting. I requested him to come and give a, uh, remarks about this program because this uh, this program is going under the banner of NCID uh, under the Innovation Club of RC Noida. That is why we have invited a very eminent uh, person to speak on the use of the technology. Now I request Dr. Opi Sharma to uh, give the special remarks about this program. Thank you, uh, Chaturvedi Sahib. First of all, Namaskar Ghosh Sahib. No, uh, really, it's uh, very nice to see you after a long time. And uh, you should listen to me, it's always very good. And the uh, use of technology in education, certainly we will be enriched by that. And I would like to thank uh, our regional center uh, for your kind information, Ghosh Sahib. I would like to tell you that almost all regional centers now have innovation clubs. So great, now great, innovation great. is very, very popularly, very, uh, you can say, too much talked in the university. All the regional centers are talking about the innovation entrepreneurship and uh, in headquarter also, we all are, have been doing uh, under your guidance also, we did these all things. So now the regional center, Noida, uh, I have seen for last few months, regularly they are organizing this kind of program. And you can see the, the kind of uh, audience who are with us. Uh, every time uh, so large number of people are joining, they are getting benefit uh, and uh, this kind of talks uh, uh, from the eminent persons like you certainly will uh, encourage our budding entrepreneurs, innovators. They will help, in, uh, help them in thinking differently because now government of India is also encouraging towards innovation, entrepreneurship and startup. And particularly in the field of uh, education, so many innovation and startups are taking place. So uh, I hope in that context, uh, today's talk will be very useful, not only for our students, but for all of us, uh, those who are who have joined from uh, headquarter, regional centers, as well as from the study centers, because uh, knowing about new things happening in the field of education, particularly using the technology, will be certainly uh, useful for all of us uh, in case of distance learning, open and distance learning. So uh, Chaturvedi sahab, I will not take much time. I think it will be good to listen to uh, Ghosh sahab. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to join. In fact, uh, I was in another meeting, so uh, but I will be there uh, to listen to you, sir. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, sir. Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Now I request uh, Dr. C.K. Ghosh, Services former director NCIT, former director SCC, SSC, to speak about the uh, use of technology in education. This is the today's topic is the use of technology in education. And uh, we will definitely listen, listen about the use of technology in the ODL system. Large number of the students have joined and coordinators have joined to uh, uh, listen you. Sir, I welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so first of all, my heartfelt gratitude to uh, the two divisions, the two nodal divisions, Regional Services Division and the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education. And uh, fortunately, and coincidentally for me, I was very intimately associated 
with these two divisions during my service tenure at Indira Gandhi National Open University. So it gives me an immense pleasure to join in this program. I'm indeed grateful to all of you for giving me this opportunity and for giving the opportunity of meeting old friends, though virtually. Incidentally, I have come to Delhi yesterday. I'm in Delhi, uh, quite close to RC Noida uh, at the moment. But still, we are meeting virtually. This program was supposed to have held on the 11th of May, the National Technology Day, and it was quite befitting. But due to other reasons, it could not be done. And so it had got rescheduled today. Uh, let me share the screen with you. Is it visible? Yes, sir. How to make it full screen? I'm unable to make it full screen. Or will it be like this only? Sir, use F5 on your keyboard. F5. F5. Yeah. No, it's not happening. Anyway, let, uh, I, I think it's visible. Yes, sir. No need full screen. It is good, sir. So use F11. F11. F5, you said first. No, it's, it's Sir, first go to slideshow option and... The, I'm not getting that slideshow option. I don't know why. Every time something or the other happens, I have delivered so many pictures. Sir. Okay, okay. Sir, it's uh, okay. It's visible. It's uh, now visible. it is full full screen, I think. Yeah, it's visible, sir. Mm. And I have delivered so many lectures thanks to this pandemic, but every time I fumble at the beginning. Sorry for that. <coughs> So, as has already been pointed out, the topic of today's lecture is use of technology in education. In fact, let me give a brief about the National Technology Day. It was established by our former Prime Minister Sri Atal Vyari Vajpayee. And as you know, it had commemorated the Pokhran nuclear tests and highlights the technological achievements of the country. The original nuclear test was held in the year 1974. Mrs. Indira Gandhi was the prime minister at that time. And then the second nuclear test, uh, which was held in 1998, and under the leadership of Sri Atal Vyari Vajpayee, is being commemorated through this National Technological Day because it was a technological achievement and it pledged for peaceful uses of atomic power. You can see the Pokhran site, and you can also see the stalwart, our former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam there. He was a very, very significant part of this exercise, which took place in Pokhran. So that's about the background of the uh, National Technology Day. That's why it is observed on 11th of May. You should not confuse it with the Engineers Day, which takes place on 15th of September on the birthday of Vishweshwaraya. That is again a very, very significant day for the country. But Technology Day is observed on 11th of May. We are doing it on 16th of May. Now, the first thing when I tell about peaceful use of atomic energy or peaceful use of nuclear energy, or let me generalize a bit more peaceful use of energy, the first thing which comes to my mind that technology has facilitated us through the entire process of green revolution and we have become self-sufficient in food. That was a great achievement of technological intervention in our country. I put it on the 
top of the list of the facilities and the outcomes of technological development. And then I've listed some of the landmarks. Introducing Asia Pacific's largest communication system. I think we should all be aware of the contributions made by our country, the capabilities of our country. Asia Pacific's largest communication system. And then if you are aware of the activities at DRDO, Sir, sorry to interrupt. Please uh, share. You please change your slide, sir. I have changed the slide. Sir, it is use of technology in education. We are saying. Uh, I don't know why I am changing the slide. Sir, I am saying you had prepared very well slides, but we can't see, sir. Why is it not happening? I am changing here. I have changed here. You are not. Uh, you, are, you are not seeing. Sir, I am seeing use of technology in education by Dr. C. K. Ghosh. This slide only. Slide is no, not moving, sir. Is it moving now? No, sir. No. Sir, press. No, sir. arrow key on the keyboard huh? to move this no no i am i am used to this thing i have done number of times i am using the navigation key if it is changing in front of me so you want to go sir my question sir can you please uh, put in the normal mode itself exit this slide show mode that that would work sir sometimes there is uh, such kind of technical glitches so there is one option you can uh, send this ppt to siren ma'am or any other sir they can share if uh, there is problem in uh, your laptop and you can see and you can say the change the slicer i have done like that also but why it is not happening i don't know when i'm sharing the screen whatever appears on the screen should be visible to you also <laughs> now it is yeah yeah sir the yes, aim sir, yes, yeah, sir. yeah it is moving sir the aim of uh, program no, no. yeah yeah it is good sir sir please it's so, my so, humble so, request so, so. please show me uh, since starting sir you made very so 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 let me use this mode ha huh? in fact uh, going to the full hello am i audible uh, this yes, is sir, yes sir yes sir yes, yes. yes. this is good sir so so, so uh, let me not go back go to this full screen mode let me use the uh, Uh, this particular mode okay so uh, now i am quite used to it it happens with every lecture of mine i don't know how many lectures i have delivered after this online mode became popular yeah hello but but, but every time there is some problem uh, starting uh, problem uh -huh. and so there has been loss of time i'm sorry for that i don't know whether i'll be fined like nitish rana Nitish Rana has to sell out a fine of rupees twenty-four lakhs, you know, for slow over rate. So I don't know whether Amit will put that fine on me. <laughs> <laughs> Now this, uh, uh, as requested by you, I am going back. This National Technology Day was first named by our former Prime Minister Sri Atul Bihari Vajpayee, and this commemorates the second Pokhran nuclear test. The first was held in nineteen seventy-four. under the leadership of mrs indira gandhi so the second pokhran nuclear test was held in 1998 under the leadership of sri atal bihari vajpayee and this was more than hello 
Hello, sir. Sir, your voice is lagging. My voice is not clear. Clear, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Anyway, so uh, it should not be construed as ourselves getting further strengthened as far nuclear power is concerned, because it was labeled as a technological achievement. So that is very interesting. It was labeled as a technological achievement, not in the form of showing our uh, muscle of atomic and nuclear energy. And then along with that, and as you know, the main stalwart was our ex-president at that time uh, with this mission, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, you can see the Pokhran site. And it was declared in very unambiguous terms that it is meant for peaceful use of atomic energy or peaceful use of energy in general. And when you list our achievements by way of making peaceful use of energy, I bring our capabilities in agriculture, the green revolution at the top of the list, because we could become self-sufficient in food due to green revolution. And apart from the agricultural research, which has gone into it, it was the technological inputs, a very huge technological input, which made the green revolution a success. And it could reach every, it could reach the last mile. It could reach every citizen of the country. So that was a fantastic achievement. And then I've listed the other landmarks. Now introducing Asia's, Asia Pacific's largest communication system. We should all know this because these are the capabilities of our country. And then DRDO's development of indigenous defense system. And then recently we have seen supplying affordable drugs and vaccines globally. So we have done it very successfully during the pandemic, which had created a virtual existential crisis throughout the globe. Well, India was pioneer in supplying affordable drugs and vaccines globally. And this might have been a biochemical research, a biochemical task, but the entire process of its delivery across the globe and whichever countries we reached was a fruit of technology. Then successful space missions. You heard about the successful space missions which have been undertaken by our country. And then very significant contribution to the global IT industry. You all know about that. And uh, when you go to the Silicon Valley or similar such other places, well, Indians are there all over. And then let me show some technological mar engineering marvels. Of course, uh, this is more apt for 15 September, the National Engineers Day, which commemorates the birth of uh, Sir Vishweshwaraya. But still, hello, hello. Mark hello, guys. Yes. Siddhan Vishnoi is here. Please clap for him. Hmm. Should I continue? Yes, sir. Please do. Please do, hmm. sir. So, engineering marvels cannot happen with without technological development. And so, I thought that I shall place before you some of the engineering marvels which has happened. This is the bridge over River Chena. And then we have the Atal Tunnel in the Peet Panzal range, uh, almost uh, nine and a half kilometer long tunnel, and which takes a U-turn, and uh, it has been fantastically designed. And then the upcoming metro tunnel under River Hooghly in Kolkata. This. Ayuka, you have heard about Ayuka, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. Now, under the aegis of Ayuka, this giant meter radio wave telescope array was prepared near 
Pune. In fact, it was supposed to have gone to some other countries, but then India had shown its capabilities. And so far as I know, that it has been built at a much lesser cost than it was tendered by other organizations, this GMRT array of telescopes. The theme for National Technology Day 2023 happens to be an integrated approach to science and technology. Okay, for... I see Noida. Huh. The theme for National Technology Day 2023 happens to be an integrated approach to science and technology for a sustainable future. Now, at this stage, I should say that my situation is like that student who had gone to the examination by preparing the essay on river. And then to his dismay, he finds that he has been asked to write an essay on cow. And so what he does, he says that a cow is a four-footed domestic animal and, for, and cow lives on grass. And for eating grass, he has to go to a field which is very close by to a river. By the side of the field, there is a river. And then he writes the essay on river. The same is with me. In fact, uh, as far as technology is concerned, of course, I tried to uh, sensitize you by showing some engineering and technological marvels. But my experience lies in the area of use of technology in education. So like that boy, I'm taking you near the river. I was supposed to write an essay on cow, but I'm writing an essay on river. And my river is technology in education. So let us see what technology has done or can do for education. And basically, I'll be talking from my experience. Um, I'm not going to use very high sounding jargons and so on and so forth. But uh, IGNU gave us a lot of opportunity to apply technology to education. And uh, even after retirement, I'm attached with several projects. Uh, where I've been applying technology for education, and I'll share those experiences with you. Now, first, let us see this diagram where I have geometrically depicted the arts of face to face teaching and teaching at a distance. Now, when I say teaching at a distance, it is distance mode, but I mean teaching using technology. Now, one aspect of teaching learning is the openness of the system. Now, I'm not going to talk about openness of the system. Openness is a kind of a philosophy, whereas distance education is a mode. So I shall be more talking about the mode. And by distance education, uh, I mean by default, technology is going to come because our focus is on use of technology for education. Now, if you see it from the point of view of a very simple geometrical diagram, that in the face-to-face -face system, the learner has to learn from the study material, but he or she is facilitated by the third vertex called teacher. And this is a very, very important vertex. Without that, we cannot think of teaching learning transaction. But when it comes to technology, the third vertex becomes absent. And when the third vertex becomes absent, then the question arises that how can this interaction take place? Where is the teacher in the latter system? But rather than asking this question, we should have asked the question, can the teacher be made inbuilt into the two-way process? And uh, <clears throat> we have been thriving to bring home a very affirmative answer to this question ever since the onset of open distance education in our country in 1982 by Ambedkar Open University, and of course, IGNU follows suit in a very uh, followed suit in a very big way in 1985. But really speaking, and I think all of you should agree with me, and let us face the facts that people had a realization of the efficacy of technology only after the pandemic had struck. We had gone for online teaching, online education. That was not. A uh, very, very suitable alternative, but the only available viable alternative. I repeat, only available viable alternative. And then we could understand the efficacy. We could understand the significance. We could understand the role that technology can play 
in education dissemination. So the teacher is not there. The teacher is not present, but he can be made omnipresent in the two-way interaction. The interaction can still take place even without the third vertex in front of you, but he will be there through technology. Yes, through appropriate use of modern communication technologies. Now let us see how this teaching methodology using technology has evolved. The first thing which came is the print medium. And in our country, well, I'm not talking about the situation now. I'm talking about the 80s and 90s when uh, IGNU had made a beginning or other state open universities were making a beginning. Print happened to be the mainstay. Whatever might be the situation of technology today be, print happens to be the main, mainstay. And even today, even today, as uh, Dr. Saklani was mentioning that I met him at the Material Production and Distribution Division in 2018. I retired in 2016. Uh, I faintly recall that must, one thing was to meet him. And the other reason must have been to tell about some student not receiving the study material. Even today, in fact, last week also, I received a telephone call uh, from a student that he has not received the study material. And I uh, communicated with one of my friends. So you can definitely understand that whatever might be the influence of technology, however strong it might be, the students still depend on the print media. So when we talk about technology, we should not be ignoring print. This had been the prime medium and the mainstay for open and distance learning system. And then audio, video, interactive audio via radio and interactive video via satellite followed. And they had also played a very, very significant role. Uh, there are situations like uh, the interactive teleconferencing sessions drawing blank in many cases. Well, I'm going to be very blunt. I'm sharing my experience. But then it had its capabilities. It had its tremendous potential for uh, bringing the teacher to a large number of students. And then, of course, the virtual classroom in all possible modes. I have just written one word, virtual classroom. It can be online teaching. It can be telecounseling. It can be mobile learning. I'll try to touch upon those things. And then I'll definitely depend on my experience as I was telling. But uh, when you talk about the different medium, one thing is very important. The judicious choice of the medium. It is when you are going to teach a particular topic, what should be the ideal medium? Should it go through the print medium? Should it go through the audio medium? Should it go through the video medium? Should it go through the interactive medium? So the judicious choice of the medium is very crucial. Like I'm a student of physics. Now suppose you are going to teach a topic on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Now the portion which need a very elaborate mathematical analysis should definitely go through the print medium. And then when you're going to show an experiment, then of course the visual medium is the best medium. We are talking about our nuclear power. Say, if you are going to teach reactor physics, if not for anything else, you cannot go to the Apshara reactor for security reasons, you cannot go there. So in order to explain the reactor physics, it is ideal to have a video shot and let that video be presented by an eminent scientist. So when that eminent scientist presents the physics of reactor, then he becomes the students all across the country or even all across the globe, whosoever is watching the video. And then we also should not ignore the capabilities of audio. One can definitely understand by common sense that uh, uh, and our expert from our media center, that is Electronic Media Production Center, have joined and they will vouch for me when I say that preparing an audio is less costly and less cumbersome. Preparing a video takes a lot of effort. I have prepared a lot of videos. One video with Professor Jain Vishnu Narlikar, the famous physicist, uh, had become very popular. So we know the hassles and the preparations we need for a video. So what I mean to what I want to bring home that audio can be brought home very easily and very conveniently. So I'll spend one slide on that, how audio can be conveniently used. Even today, 
how audio can be conveniently used for dissemination of education. And uh, I'll be telling that again based on my experience. But before I do that, uh, I'm just showing on the screen the cover page of one book. Uh, you know the other names here. My colleagues, uh, Momita is very much with the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education. You know Dr. Garg. He was our pro-vice chancellor and also interim vice chancellor, a very, very eminent scholar and administrator. Now, I'm not making any advertisement of our book, but uh, what I want to say, please believe me that I'm not going to make any advertisement of this book. This has also been published by Viva Books, but all the technological modes, all the innovations made in distance education have been listed here. It's a kind of a ready reconner. It is uh, not any kind of a great book, but as I told you, that I would speak on those things which I have experienced, which I have handled. So that's why I thought that I shall mention about this book, because I, in the within the constraints of time given to me, I cannot touch upon uh, all the modes of education, but they are there in this book. Uh, and so this book acts as a ready reconner for the technological modes that has been used for dissemination of education. So I thought that I should show you. I repeat that it is, I'm definitely not making any advertisement of our book. So coming to the impact that can be made by the audio. See, I'm talking uh, from the point of view of a face-to-face -face teacher. He has taught in the class, but then he wants to reinforce certain thing. Now, within the classroom time, here time is limited. And uh, he has to finish the syllabus. This so-called burden of finishing the syllabus is always there and which is a bane on our education system. But he wants to reinforce certain thing. So he can prepare a very small audio capsule or small snippets, say five minute snippets on the topics which you need for reinforcement. And then let that be on the YouTube, let that be played on the FM radio. And you can listen to that. If it has not to be made visually effective. Even several things in science can be brought home through audio without visual. With the, with the use of visual, it definitely becomes more effective. But then uh, we can definitely judiciously bring out things. We can definitely separate out things which can go through an audio. Conversation between a teacher and a learner. If it is done very naturally, fine. If it cannot be done naturally, it can be doctored. And you script the conversation in such a manner that the answers to several questions that are normally raised by the learners can be brought home through that conversation. Conversation between peers. You create again a script where you talk about the concerns of the students when you discuss a certain topic. As students, we have faced that there are certain things, certain questions which occur in our mind and which we hesitate to ask to our teacher in the classroom situation. But some of us among the students themselves who can articulate very well can tell the answer to that question. So a conversation between the peers can be very well organized. Panel discussion. <clears throat> if you don't want to show the faces of the panelists, then audio is a very, very useful mode. Quiz. Dramatization. We used to listen to drama over radio. Of course, uh, these days, this is not very much in use. Now, drama through radio, you can dramatize the situation, say, on Vedanta philosophy. If you dramatize a conversation between Shami Vivekananda and Sister Nivedita, Shami uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore and Roma Rola, so then this dramatization. Uh, is a very, very useful one. And I think everybody in IGNU, uh, whosoever is participating today, has taken part in interactive radio counseling. I'm not going to elaborate on that. And it turned out to be very, very useful as a uh, communication mode, as an education dissemination mode. So don't ignore audio. Audio has its capabilities. And then video. A video can do wonders. Experiments can be taught using video or even interactive video via satellite, which you have seen through the teleconferencing mode. Now, but 
see again when i talk about judicial seals again i am talking from my experience that video is very good for bringing home the kind of human expression now uh, what was uh, rinku singh doing when he hit those five sixes against gujarat titans and uh, won the match for kolkata knight riders in the last one so you can write pages on it you can write thousand words on it but you just show the video shot what rinku singh and what the other teammates were doing with rinku singh and it would be worth more than thousand words so conveying human expression and then going to the sites where you cannot go say the angkor wat temple a uh, 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 an architectural wonder and there are several such architectural wonders across the globe so you can bring them through video uh, not only architectural wonders several other things and then say some deliberation by an eminent scholar like say uh, professor amartya sen is delivering a talk so if it is as i told that if it is a conversation between a student and a teacher uh, then that can be done through audio but if it is a very very eminent teacher it can be brought home through video and then i being a student of physics now coming to experiments in physics well video can be an excellent teacher but then when you are going to perform an experiment you have to do hands on this is something which we lose sight of when we say virtual classroom when we say virtual lab well i have uh, joined in the exercise of preparing virtual labs also but remember one thing i as a student of physics and since i did my research in experimental physics i know that doing experiment is a lot of feeling which you do physically which you feel with your different senses mostly your hands and how can you do that through a video or a virtual lab you cannot do that the video can teach you in an excellent way like when uh, in fact when we were students and when experiments were taught to us say on a particular day the class is been taken by some teacher on another day it is been taken by another teacher it's not like a particular all of us have experienced this a particular theoretical course is taken by a single teacher but experiment say you are attending lab thrice a week and on three days three different teachers are coming and they are giving you instructions about doing the experiments in three different manner and so you as a student as a novice at that particular time have every chance to get confused but that would not happen through a very nicely designed video a nicely designed virtual lab so when it comes to instructing you very efficiently uh, very professionally about how to do an experiment well video is excellent and interactive video also where you can ask questions and find out but how to make you do the experiment so here i'll say what we have done through technology uh, teaching through video has taken place but that needed a backup and i'll tell what i could not bring photographs of course there were several scattered photographs i tried to assimilate them but then i landed up with this in fact during the pandemic during the year 2021 for the ngp qualifiers national graduate physics examination you know these are the students who go for the physics olympiad and this examination is conducted by iapt indian association of physics teachers a totally voluntary organization we do not work for any kind of pecuniary benefit and this is something a pride which we take uh, a pride i take as a member of iapt now the issue with which iapt is very much concerned and i think i would like to convey this to all of you uh, so that you can ponder upon that when you are going to appear for a test where you have been tested for a subject which has experimental component like physics chemistry or biology and such examinations are neat je and so on and so forth now they are tested only for the theoretical component have you ever observed that they are tested only for theoretical component a very good iitian 
has entered the portals of IIT by way of his performance at the theoretical examination. But physics is an experimental subject. Chemistry is an experimental subject. Have we tested his capability in experiments? No. Now, in NGP, what we do for selecting the final four students for participating at the Olympiad, we take the theoretical examination. The first screening is done through the theoretical examination. And then they are asked to appear for practical examination. And these practical examinations are conducted at different parts of the country. But what happened in 2020 and 2021? They could not come to the laboratory. But still, I again take pride in saying, but still we had conducted the practical examination. And then we were facilitated by technology. The first stage you can read out, I think, was rigorous training and orientation through the online mode. Through online mode, we said we made an elaborate planning. Our advantage was that we did this only with the finally selected 30 students. So we, uh, the initial examination is taken by more than 400 students, that is the theoretical examination. But after the screening takes place, it uh, squeezes down to 30 students. So these 30 students were given training through online mode. And then all the supervisors who would be supervising the uh, practical examination were also trained. This rigorous training experiments, uh, rigorous training activities took place. Then home-based experimental kits, and each kit costed about 1,500 to 2,000 rupees, were sent to the students by courier. On the designated day, the question paper was sent online. They performed the experiments with cameras on. They performed the experiments at their home. This is vital. With cameras on to facilitate proctoring. And proctoring, I'm not using the word surveillance. It was something more than surveillance. As you know, in fact, physics students among the listeners would be knowing that when they are performing experiments during a practical examination, they might have had some problem. They need to have some guidance from the internal examiner. So that was also being done in the online. And after the examination, they uploaded the answer script. The answer script would be having the tabular presentation of the data, calculations, graphs, and so on and so forth, with supporting video, which was sent for evaluation. And the entire activity, as I told, were conducted under the aegis of Indian Association of Physics Teacher. And uh, this was held in 2021. And the main credit goes to our Center for Science and Culture at Midnapur College, who had taken a big initiative in conducting this online examination. And I am a part, I was part of this exercise. And so, as I told you, that I'll be sharing my experience. And this is something which I feel very satisfied uh, about. And I can say that I've really used technology for education dissemination, and not only that, also for evaluation of students. And this is another exercise. Uh, you can see the satellite here. And uh, our IGNU colleagues are very much aware of this particular mode of satellite-based teaching. Uh, let me tell you a little bit uh, for the sake of history that it started with SITE in our country, S-I-T-E, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment. And then that was followed by UGC's Countrywide Classroom. All the colleges had gone, got televisions and they were put on during uh, the lunch hour, maybe 12.30 to 1.30 and programs were put on. But I know how much they were made use of. I was told that in many of the cases they were used during the ODI matches which used to take place at that time. That jokes apart, that was not very much successful. But it really started picking up with TDCC, my new colleagues would remember, Training and Development Communication Channel. And then came the great thing, EDUSAT. EDUSAT was a real revolution in uh, satellite-based teaching. EDULAT, EDUSAT had five beams, two national beams and three regional beams. I'm not going into the technicalities. And one such beam is called the KU band, which was being used. And like the EMPC at IGNU headquarters, there was a hub at Jabalpur. Like EMPC at IGNU headquarters, there was a hub at Jabalpur and which was receiving 
uh, satellite signals and it was going to the schools where we have very i should say middle class or lower middle class students and mostly first generation learner you are seeing a situation in the classroom now they were all primary schools and it was a part of the project which was named rajiv gandhi project for educate supported elementary education our uh, present director rst i think would be thrilled to recall his experiences with uh, this particular enterprise and <clears throat> uh, he was at jabalpur at that time and i have very pleasing memories of interacting with him when i used to go for this rajiv gandhi project now it really served the lower middle class people in a primary school you know the situation that uh, for a particular class say the same teacher is teaching class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 so in several classes teacher should not be there maybe you will not be surprised to see that she is the only teacher who is administrative head who is in charge of mid day meal that's a pathetic situation in our country now what will the students who are sitting idle do and at that time this particular scheme as you can see in this diagram became very handy and it became quite successful and during vacations this particular channel was used for training purposes then another enterprise which with uh, i was very intimately uh, associated was saksha the one stop education portal of the ministry of human resource development now ministry of education why on one stop education portal it had apart from the academic issues it had every information like scholarship and uh, other avenues educational resources for students who used to say from kg to pg so what we did we uh, then there was a testing module and then the interactive module and then the super achievers now all these testing and super achiever they facilitated the learners in a different way how i'll just show you we use this four quadrant core quadrant mode which is even very popular today i'm showing how the uh, how a particular physics lesson was done this is at the plus 2 level so this we call the first quadrant not in the coordinate geometry style where this one is the first quadrant this we used to call the first quadrant where we had just given the ncert textbook but we had made it active say we are describing triangle law of force now if it is the usual book you see the already prepared diagram of the triangle but there the triangle would be drawn by somebody water would be poured from a beaker so all these things were shown in an active manner and then we had the e tutor where we had loaded videos and web resources and animations which of course uh, would not attract any uh, copyright restriction and then the most important was the fourth quadrant self assessment where we had the testing modules and the super achiever module and there were most hits on this particular uh, quadrant where we used to make students prepare i remember we had a horrific time during the month of february march before the uh, iit je examinations and there were many hits at uh, this particular quadrant so uh, this of course had evolved into several forms now enemy i city had taken up and then npital had come up in a very big way and now the shape it had taken is called the national digital library fortunately i also had been a part of it of course just before the pandemic after the pandemic of course uh, my contacts uh, are very limited with what is known as the national digital library so it's again a very interesting story of evolution from shakshat to enemy i city to this national digital library and national digital library is doing a great work in fact uh, you can visit the national digital library and they are not only digitizing the important texts but they are also digitizing as far as science is concerned i know uh, different science magazines like professor esen bosch had started gyan o vigyan in bangla uh, even our 
Dr. A.P. O.P. Sharma would be knowing about that. It was started in 1948 and all the journals starting from 1948 has been digitized by National Digital Library and they have been put on the portal. But then once we talk about uh, online teaching and the use of net, in fact, this caution is very much important and this particular slide I've prepared keeping the students in mind that it's already past 4 p.m. I think I'll have to conclude quickly. Uh, the caution is all that is data, this particularly meant for the students, is not information. All that is information is not knowledge. Again, all that is knowledge might not be wisdom. And most importantly, all that is wisdom may not be the truth. So we are truth seekers. And so this particular caution is very crucial. And then there are several limitations of online teaching. Well, please don't consider whatever I have listed in this slide as exhaustive. I have listed only those which come to our mind very primarily. But again, I repeat that these are not exhaustive. And uh, we know that we have learned about these limitations, particularly during the pandemic. The pandemic acted as an eye opener. It told us that uh, online teaching is a viable alternative, but it also helped us in identifying the loopholes in making the scheme a success. And so you can, uh, these, the topics which I have listed, the issues which I have listed, I think do not need any further explanation. Medium of instruction. Now, if you teach in English, how the students of the rural areas are going to benefit out of that. <coughs> in fact, in EDUSAT, as I was telling about the regional and the, the national and the regional beams, there was provision through the regional beams to immediately translate what you are teaching in English to the local regional language. So it was a very, very potentially strong mode. The digital divide, which had been the main concern, and this digital divide is increasing. There is no way to say that the digital divide is getting reduced. Maintenance of equipments, how you maintain the equipments at different parts of the country. And finally, the sensitivity towards the use of this media, because we are used to face-to-face -face teaching, the traditional mode of teaching. And then when we are made to use this mode, uh, that also under duress because uh, you see that there is no other alternative and so you use that mode. And then when there is some lacunas, power cut, some problem of net, in fact, in today, during today's lecture, there was problem of communication, uh, the voice getting cut and things of that sort. People feel very frustrated. So that's why a good bit of sensitivity towards the use of media is required in order to make this a success. And uh, just a little mention about this, what I said, what I say as metallic minds. Now we have come to the age of chat GPT. I have not used that. So I'm not at all competent to talk about that, but I can definitely tell about some of the concerns and chat GPT I have just used this phrase, uh, metallic minds I picked up from an editorial comment in a newspaper about this particular mode. Now, how are we anticipating this? I'm just placing them as some concerns. How we are anticipating the scenario of the walking teacher getting replaced by a robot? How we can ensure uniformity of instructional ped pedagogy and evaluation methods? Are we heading towards cloning of mediocrity? Because uh, what I have learned that AI is going to make the routine things possible and routine things much more efficient than it is done by the human being. Now, when you say the routine things, then you fix something, say in a classroom situation, all of us have been teachers and there are very bright students, there are mediocre students and there are poor students. And generally, the teacher starts with the level of the middle level students, neither the poor students nor the very bright students. And then depending on the interaction, he switches over and he makes his adjustment. So when uh, you are doing going to fix at a particular level, it should be the mediocre level. And so are we going to clone mediocrity? Then the stringent needs for prior planning, the regulatory bodies and accreditation. 
this accreditation will not be like the NAC accreditation. It has to be accreditized in a very, very systematic, meticulous manner. And then technology, this is my concern, technology may leave little room for the arithmetic teachers who had mastered the art of performing in the front of a live audience using a dynamic script. Teaching in class is a dynamic script. The script which you, you, you don't carry a script, you don't carry what you call in the media terms as a storyboard. You take a dynamic script, like when Shatijit Ray used to prepare a script, he say that if, uh, the actors and actresses would say that everybody is a puppet. Like late Smita Patil has acted with Govind Nihalini, Shyam Venegal, Ninal Shen, and of course, Shatijit Ray in Shadgati. And she says that in Manikda, said Manikda means Shatijit Ray, everybody is a puppet, the script speaks. So the script is such a strong component, such a strong element of the whole show. And the teacher does that, but the teacher has a dynamic script depending on the nature of audience you face. So how can technology assume that kind of a dynamic script? So according to my perception, of course it's my perception, it may vary with others, may leave very little room for the enigmatic teachers who had mastered the art of performing in front of a live audience. The teacher will make an abstract thing very, very clear. He will relate an abstract thing with a real life situation. He will make you arouse questions. He will handle your questions in a different manner. He, uh, you raise a question which he finds very interesting and he answers a part of it and leaves a part of it for you to ponder upon. So he can play around with such a thing. And that's what I mean by live audience and dynamic script and how are we going to do that. So these are some concerns uh, which I felt I should sensitize you about. And then again, let me go back to the limitations before I conclude that these are our concerns. These are our real concerns about online teaching. And this cannot be solved by a single person. We need a very, very big teamwork. We need the team of teachers. We need the team of computer operators. We need the team of technicians. And we need the team of politicians, because uh, minimizing digital divide is a task mostly to be performed by the politicians through a sensible political will. So, so many persons have to come together. And that's how I remembered this particular saying by Sir Arthur Eddington. Arthur Eddington, you know, had been a great physicist, but mostly he had given the theory of arrow of time in thermodynamics. But he was more a critic. His critical faculty was much more developed. And he was the first to criticize Albert Einstein's theory of general theory of relativity. He was the first to criticize our Chandrasekhar's uh, limit, the limit of the mass of star, which uh, he had given. And the Chandrasekhar receiving his Nobel Prize got delayed by almost 60 years from 1924 to 1983. And he became a Nobel laureate as an American citizen and not as an Indian citizen and all due to Arthur Eddington. But then uh, I remember him for this particular saying. He says that we often think that when we have completed our study of one, one within quotes, we know all about two, two within quotes, because again, two within quotes is one and one or in fact to maintain his particular saying i've used the word and i would have preferred to use the word plus one plus one now in our situation in our country we find that one plus one is more often than not less than two that is i'm talking about synergy how to get more as a team when we individually participate with that particular spirit because we forget that we still have to make a study of this and to make one plus one equal to two or even more than two. So this particular saying of Sir Arthur Eddington brings out the hallmark of the use of the word and and he tells us in a very subtle way to work in a team, T-E-A-M. I use this as an acronym together everyone achieves 
more t e a m together everyone achieves more so with this let us hope that all our journey in making the fruits of the technology as a driver of education a success by having a good journey of this word and so vividly portrayed by sir arthur eddington thank you very much for giving me a very patient hearing uh, sir thank you very much it is a wonderful lecture sir it is really wonderful and uh, we learned lot about the use of technology in not only in education but only also in but also in open and distance learning sir as you said that the cake rinku singh made us uh, five sixes in consecutively in the last over against the gujarat titan really it was a historic match between the kkr and gujarat titan i saw the target was a 29 runs and he made five consecutive sixes against the yash dayal of gujarat titan really it is a wonderful match or uh, we learnt a lot about the use of the new technology uh, of e e education sir now sir uh, i request sir, how to go back now i request dr m l askar deputy director now he became the additional director letter has not yet received but we got this information from headquarters uh, dr uh, m l askar Oh, that's a great news! Yeah, yeah. congratulations, Dr. Laskar. You deserve it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still remember your very crisp and uh, very pointed notings. He is a really is a very committed, and he is handling the lot of work of the RC Noida. Really, he is I, I proud to associate with Dr. Laskar. He is a really is a wonderful man, uh, Dr. La Shiran Mukherjee, Dr. Laskar, and. Uh, Anje, Anjana, all are uh, working here at, at the uh, Noida Regional Center. Now I uh, request Dr. Laskar to give the remark in brief because uh, we have another meeting of Swayam Prabha. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a very good lectures our sir, good sir has given. It was a very informative, very brief, of course, and. because technology has a very important role to play and it has been playing a role since time immemorial you do not know that technology is playing a role in our education also technology is a part of our education technology is a part of our education only and it is playing a very important role and sir was talking about the printing then audio video so many issues in fact printing is also a technology you tend to forget that it is it is not a technology but printing is itself is a technology it is important technology it was developed long back and it has an important role he was mentioning that and technology has some other important role in the sense that people tend to learn by different means and styles of learning they learn by reading seeing then then they learn by listening some learn by touching or feeling Like kinesthetic, you can like like that, and and in fact, it has been observed that when you see or when you see visually things, then learning becomes more effective. And technology plays an important role. An audio part also has an important role in education because some people learn more effective way through listening, auditory auditory learning. It is important. then visual kind of learning and it is it is very important part actually and technology can also play a role in the charm in the sense that it can makes education accessible and it can make wider wider uh, it can make it, it can widen the scope for spreading education in a democratic country like us it can make teaching learning a fun interesting it can make it interactive also and and the way sir was telling you have to make it you have to make it our choice and specific uh, situation circumstances how to use it you are not supposed to be dependent on technology 
for our learning learning has to be full hearted and it it has to be mainly through our uh, interactive process and technology can play a role in that process only technology is not part of actually you cannot say it is a learning it is it is only a supporting mechanism for learning of course as you learn you use technology obviously so you have to keep in mind and sir is telling about some new technologies like artificial intelligence and some gpt these things are coming nowadays these are issues in fact which will in fact change the dynamics of learning and maybe in future you have to think about it whether it has done good for us or whether it has done something negative uh, impact on our learning process these are very important because learning you have to see learning in different contexts learning in different contexts in the sense and technology techno from the perspective of technology technology as a technology as a support service support mechanism and learning learning another part is that that technological support one is support services and another is learning so learning requires two things one is actual learning in terms of our cognitive development in, in, in the, the, our knowledge development that that is one part important part so that sir is telling about some data information knowledge and wisdom something like that so it, you have to relate how should so much information are available with us nowadays so all the informations may not may not be knowledge all the information may not be knowledge for us because the knowledge is only that which information you actually observe in our mind and which changes the dynamics of our our brain which changes the status of our brain or mind and you change behave accordingly you learn and speak accordingly so that becomes our knowledge systems and from our knowledge systems you actually try to be more refined and improve ourselves to achieve the truth how does that and this has to be actually through part of our human interaction process and technology can play only a supportive role in that regard obviously it has important role but it will be only supportive role in that so it was a very good lecture sir has given very important issues and important roles of uh, technology support and also has questioned us about the use of technology in our future education so thanks to you sir it was a very good lecture sir and i i am very happy to see you after long gap sir actually i met you in rsd for long time back and it was very good to see you you are still active and that is good sir that is good i wish you all the best sir for a good thank health you, sir thank you thank, thank you thank you very much thank you dr laskar now i request dr siran mukherjee for concluding remarks <laughs> अपॉर्चुनिटी <laughs> and we would have discussions on those areas of remembering the you would touch upon these issues those times as well when you are teaching a course like fst through such videos whether it is method of science or say story of a river and then we would converse in debates and how we have come a long way since then sir no doubt we agree that uh, the challenges thrown in by lockdown the situation did lead to a viable alternative in online learning so the issue of technology integration was a big thing as well as learning and but then it was a transformation phase that we all agree and we too agree with the concerns that you have shown towards the end of your lecture then there those issues with the newer challenges will continue to you know imbibe the human minds and find newer ways of using technology as dr laskar light is said as a supportive uh, mechanism to the overall picture thank you sir thank you thank you now i only spoke from my experience whatever little i have done sir be, be it edusat be it sakshat be it sir. rajiv gandhi project or be it the online examination we took last last to last year i all spoke from my experience it has been a very rich experience shall learning that
I would also like to add what Dr. Siklami said. Uh, I still uh, remember the Rabindranath Tagore's Jainti that he used to celebrate when Sarva was here. So that again, I really, really like to remember. And it has always been a pleasure to be uh, to be with uh, Dr. C.K. Ghosh and working with him. It was indeed a learning experience for all of us. Uh, well, today, uh, it, again, I would say it was our proud privilege to have amidst us Dr. Uh, C.K. Ghosh and to be um, with him for this lecture on use of technology in education. Uh, he highlighted the significance of National Technology Day and also shared with us the theme for the National Technolo Technology Day, that is an integrated approach to science and technology for a sustainable future for this year, 2023. Uh, he very engagingly highlighted the outcomes of technological development in India over the last two, three decades. He gave us an insight into the role of technology in education, not only distance education, but education in general. Um, he also highlighted the evolution of andragogy using technology. He provided an interesting illustration of audio and video as a medium for teaching and learning environments and how audio and video facilitates in reaching the students at the different uh, corners of the country. He shared with us the pivotal role played by technology in assisting us in reaching the stakeholders in the far-flung areas of the country. It was indeed very, very interesting, very insightful, and thoroughly engaging for all of us to be here with us, sir. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank thank you. you Dr. Siran. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Anil Kumar, Assistant Registrar, for vote of thanks. Anil, very brief vote of thanks. On Saturday, four we have okay. another meeting with the Vice Chancellor for the Swayam Prabha. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, Namaskar. Uh, very good afternoon, one and all. On behalf of all students, teachers, and staff of IGNU and also Innovation Club, uh, I am glad to be online here to express my vote of thanks. I am also, I would like to extend my heartfelt uh, gratitude to our esteemed Honorable Vice Chancellor, who has also attended uh, for a few first few minutes here with us. And under his leadership and guidance, uh, we have organized a session on use of technology in education under the flagship program uh, of Innovation Club. Uh, special thanks to uh, resource person, Dr. C.K. Ghosh, sir, uh, our former uh, director, RST, uh, for accepting our invitation for being here with us today. Uh, I thank to our senior RD, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi, sir, uh, Dr. M. Saklani, sir, R.C. Jaipur, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Shiran Mukherjee, ma'am, uh, Deputy Director, Dr. M. L. Askar, sir, and ARD, ma'am, uh, Dr. Anjana, uh, and other colleagues, those who are present here, and our students also. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here and making this informative session wonderful and memorable. Thank you once again, one and all. Uh, thank you, Anil. Uh, uh, Dr. Anjina, please take the photograph of all. Please open the. Yeah. Dr. Anjina, photograph, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Uh, we should stand for the national anthem, please. Punjab Singh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Puttala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Ujjala Jaladhi Karanga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gaha 
जन जन मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे